everyone. Um, welcome back to our YouTube channel. YouTube channel. After seven <laughs> years being away. <laughs> I know. Welcome back to our YouTube channel again. Um, this is Amimani. I'm Chebo. Chebo. Um, so welcome to our first video of our first series of conversations with Jebo and Imani. Yep. Um, and two generations, one two. story. Absolutely. <laughs> two right. Stories. One story. <laughs> two generations, one story. Yes. Um, so yeah, so to introduce myself very quickly, we are going to go to, I guess, a deeper introduction later. But my name is Imani. Um, I'm almost 30. I live in Australia, but um, originally from Africa. What about you? Of course, all of us came from Africa, East Africa. Kenya is home. I am Chebo. Um, I can say um, I'm a mot motivational speaker and um, I encourage people. I, I, I like to uplift people who, who don't have a voice. And I believe if you have a voice, you have voice, you have strength and you're very strong because you can use it mm. to advocate for yourself and change the world. True. Is that what i Ongari Madai. Ongari Madai. She was she was really a, a good role model. True. That and she's still influencing people to yeah. the moment. Her legacy lives. Yeah. Mm. And so I guess um looking back, I'm yeah. sure you'll probably go and look at our previous videos. Probably don't. <laughs> don't Google us. Don't Google. Don't <laughs> Google. <laughs> so yeah, so previously we used to do kind of short form videos, very playful. Very like, hey man, those videos, boy. We go, you go to a shift, do an active day. night, you, you, yeah. You record in between, um, yeah. active nights and shifts, my friend. It shift work was tough that time. We were I just know. landing in and trying to, yeah. I think we're just trying to create a space where we can all get out of the pressures Absolutely. of assimilating mm. into a new country yeah. and sharing that as well, yeah. And networking, um, and I guess we kind of lost touch because got life. Hey, life gets in the way. Yeah. Um, and Let's so go. now, I guess now we are in a different point in our life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, are a, we are a bit more laid back compared to before. No more shift works. I know. Thank more goodness, mature. man. Hey. <laughs> more mature. So we're trying to make it more like deep and meaningful conversation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so great. So... Uh, but seriously, mom, um, why are we actually doing this series? Like, why, why are we coming back? Yeah, I think we're coming back, uh, one, to uh, give gratitude to the universe for this far. We've come seven years down. And also to share our travel journey since those years up to now. Mm -hmm. And also to give a platform whereby people can relate because... I believe in stories. I believe stories connect people. Mm. I believe shared stories uh, build people. Shared stories connect <clears throat> the world. True. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's very true. Story, story, story sharing, storytelling yes, story is telling. always a powerful form it of is. connecting. Yeah. Um, for me, I think more so I really want to encourage and inspire through storytelling, as I said um uh and more so from a lens of someone who is growing up <laughs> like going through the growing uh, the life trajectory of growing um and i want to i want us to create a community together yeah. community yeah. of like-minded people whether you are kenyan australian i don't know American, mexican african Thai, like asian whoever can come into this page and they can feel that they relate so it's kind of like a canvas of life through the lens of me navigating through my 20s um and mom navigating through her life <laughs> Her life, because she's always young at heart. <laughs> oh no, I'm just <laughs> new, <old>, please. <laughs> but yeah, because Who cares? Have, I feel like when you're young, there's nothing. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. What I feel like, what, and I, I get it. All the pe elder people try to tell us, all right, this is how you should be doing. Avoid this, avoid this. But we, as young people, because you haven't been through it, you don't necessarily understand, understand or follow yeah. the whatever. But anyway, so we're trying just to paint a canvas of what life is between our different generations yeah and probably you might find those our stories are inspiring to you if you do i'm glad 
Yeah, pick something to build your nest. Yeah, true. Yeah, pick hopefully you pick something that you don't have to pick everything, but just pick something that inspires speaks, you. Inspires you, speaks and to your heart, makes you laugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. True. Yeah. Okay, we've tried to uh, put some structure to our Yeah, and before we go there, I would just mm-hmm. like to say that um, because this is an engagement and sharing point, you, we, are, you, we also encourage you to share your stories with us as well. Because true. your story builds me. Yeah. Because I believe when we share stories, yeah. we build each other. So I believe by engaging with us, you build us as well. It's true. Mm. And one thing I've come to learn as well as I'm growing up, and maybe mom... I don't know if you went through this. I've come to realize that life is a very lonely journey. It is. And very personal. Very personal, mm. very lonely. And so you need to kind of put yourself out there and share. But vulnerability is very hard for a lot of people. And even for me as well. When I was young, I was very, I was an open book. But now I'm getting into that area, I'm more of a closed book. But it's very important for you to share your story and your story matters and it's also powerful regardless it is it is yeah. I, I think i read somewhere which says um our scars make us beautiful they don't define us they are the stories they are the 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 their achievements you know mm. yeah so yeah don't die with the problem share with people it's so true a story i've shared have solved absolutely <laughs> that's my mantra okay mm-hmm. all right so we're going to try and segment this conversation. So mom, let's dig into something more fun. I don't know if it's fun, but anyway. Chebo. Chebo. Okay. <laughs> All right, Chebo. Let's dig into something more fun. Um, and this is about trying to dissect storytelling through different generations. All right. What... Okay, if you had to name one big difference between our generation, what would it be? Wow, uh, uh, one big difference. Mm-hmm. The way we, you approach the world is not the way I approach the world. The way you see the world in that sense is different from the way I do. My Elaborate generation. Yeah. Specifically? In the sense that you people, like uh, the younger generation, um, tend to... They are, they, are, they are not risk affairs. It's, like, it's not like us as a parent, for example. Having a daughter like this, I'm always worried. Mm. But for you, you, you are wondering, why is mom worried? I'm okay. Yeah? Because I remember there was a time you were Do telling me... you think that's me, an age thing, though, because we are not parents? No, no, no. Not because you are not parents. You mm. told me about age. I grew up in a, um, at a time whereby... I, I knew why. Yes. I knew why. It's because of, for us, it's because of social media. Yeah, I think you are more empowered. You guys are more empowered. Are we? And yeah, are I think you true? are more empowered, more okay. educated, more the the, the, the socialization is a more uh, and I say it is not as strict as ours, like when we were younger. Uh, so while we're there, mm-hmm. actually, let's mm-hmm. talk about the difference in terms of digital or media, how that has made. Oh, so tell my... me about when you were t- when you were in your late twenties. What was your life like? How were you connecting with your friends? When I got, st- uh, we were using. <laughs> That's a good question. So <laughs> I grew up at a time whereby we used letters. You know, we used to use letters. Mm-hmm. So you write a letter to your boyfriend and then you wait for him to even reply. Even to your friends? Yes, even to my friends. Why? Well, right. Yeah. Okay. When we were in school, we used to use letters. Mm-hmm. And then came the time of, um, of course, from in the, in the villages, there was no call boxes. So came, came to Nairobi and there were call boxes where we okay. used reverse call. Call box for yeah. people who are not from Kenya. Oh, call, call box is a calling booth. Phone booth. Phone booth, yes. Yeah. Where you, you call somebody, we normally use reverse calls, as, mm-hmm. like myself. I used to call my sister insistently. It just felt like another call from Chebo. Anyway, and then from there, I think my, my, the first telephone, uh, mobile phone I bought was... Um, Nokia? No. Okay. There was another, another brand. Nokia. And uh, before Nokia, there was another yeah, brand. Nokia, Nokia 3310 or something. That was okay. there was one ca, ca, you know Kenya. Alcatel. Alcatel. <laughs> <laughs> no, yo, Alcatel. <laughs> it used to have a red, <laughs> uh, red <laughs> screen. <Yeah. laughs> I think it was <laughs> red <laughs> screen or green. My friend, uh-huh. that phone. Mm-hmm. You there was no social media. Media. There was no social media, so you can only send a message or receive a call. So, mm. but nowadays, you guys, man, hey, you even have um, uh, two different types of yeah. uh, telephone calls. You no longer need a camera. You no longer, you know, you have everything in your fingertips. Yeah. You even have, uh, oh. what's, what's, what's your phone? 
What's the iPhone? Name? You have iPhone. Imagine, and there's something called iPhone and Android. Who, who knew all those things? <laughs> I'm trying to learn it myself. I'm gonna have my iPhone soon, and I don't know I'm gonna do it. I'll go to a... school. I, <laughs> I think I'll need education more. Yeah. So there's a very big, very big gap, and even now, I still find people who don't want to use um, the, uh, mobile phones. They mm. prefer landline. So yeah. Yeah. True. Um, but you've had to adapt, right? Yeah. Actually, there's the landline in the house. The uh, home home phone for, oh, for Australians, yeah. yeah. Back then, during my time, there was the the home. I think phone. Australians, everyone had that though. Like you have a landline in your house, and so that's the common way that the everyone phone. would communicate to you, yeah, your father, yeah. your mother, your yeah. sister, your brother. Everyone would communicate to you. And there was no also leaving voicemails. There were no voicemails mm-hmm. then, so yeah. you just call and call later on. Yeah, yeah. all good. Yeah. So, so I grew up with phones. Mm-hmm. You see, uh, but I didn't have a phone, mm-hmm. so we used to like borrow our parents' phones. Mm-hmm. And you probably did notice this, but anyway. But hey, if you want to connect, she's confessing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if you want to connect with your boyfriend, hey. so you used to send them a text. Okay, you give them the number and you tell them to, was it, to text you? Don't call. Uh-huh. Or, or you give them certain times to call you or something. Just be like, don't call. Only call me when I'm texting you through this number because it's my mom's number. I remember there was a time I got a text and I asked where? who is where? I got a text. I don't know if a boy or someone. And I said, who is this? And he said, oh, sorry, it's a wrong number. So that was the deal. <laughs> Confession. No, didn't have any boyfriend. Confession. Really Confession. Straightforward. Child. Confession of a wimpy kid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay, great. That was, see, that was a fun session. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Yeah. So let's move into a different section segment and for this segment so we are going to be structuring our conversations according to segments because we also want to make it interactive Mm. with you guys so the next segment is um so mom you know we're living in a world where there's a lot of mental health crisis absolutely i also go through mental health issues um that maybe a lot of people don't know or wouldn't be able to and i think it's for everyone people don't it doesn't show present on your outside mm. like your demeanor doesn't show that you have mental issues for me i think i go through a lot of anxiety mm-hmm. um so i want this to be a section of dilemma and it could be a dilemma that someone who's my age has i think for now maybe like let's keep it to my because we want i want young people who probably are living in a different country to your, their parents or probably don't have parents or a mom, specifically a mom or even a parent, or are going through a dysfunctional situation situation and they can't they don't have that motherly, fatherly parent so, parenting figure or guardian figure. So I want to present a dilemma to you. So I'm going through a phase of life. Let's talk about friendships. So <laughs> I have always grown up when I was growing up, I've not had, I've never, I've never struggled with friendships. I've always been that one sociable person. Yeah, I've always mm-hmm. been that one sociable person, and I think it's because when we were young, we didn't have a lot of things that would cause conflict in our lives. Just happy, go lucky, you're going out, you're drinking. Everyone has common interests, but the more I'm growing in life, I'm realizing that. I'm getting a lot of conflict. Not a lot. Okay, we'll say a lot. Because I still have a, a lot of friends, I would say. And I still make friends. But there's some friendships that I'm finding hard to navigate. Um, and it's just because of, I guess I would probably say, miscommunication between two people. And I think because both of us are trying... We are growing in different trajectories. Yeah. And there's nothing but There's nothing bad with that. But how do you navigate... How did... Okay, tell me your experience in your... Tell me your perspective from your experience in terms of friendships. How did you deal with such situations? Like, What's if I have a friend... Okay, let's say I have a friend who... We've been friends for a long time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then we just have a little... Let's say a little tiff. I don't think it would be a fight. It's a tiff. But we've never had it. Like, for me, it's very rare for me to actually have conflict in friendships. But when I do, I move more into, like, an avoidant... Yeah, but you said stage. you have conflict, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm getting to a stage where there's conflict because I think we're all growing in different interests. Yeah. So how do you navigate that? 
one like how do you navigate a certain situation what situation I've been when you were situation. younger did you have friends yes i did do you, are you still friends with them right if now not, yes some of them this also okay for okay. those that you're not friends with is that okay is it like i just i know it's, what is it's, the conflict though what's the conflict about conflict can be about a lot of things that you disagree on time you can disagree on just how you view life and how you navigate situations in life let's say if your friend is um i don't know how to say this maybe they like chinese food mm-hmm. and you like you like mexican food right mm-hmm. but then you've <clears throat> always been eating chinese food because your friend likes chinese food mm-hmm. but now when you're growing up you're like actually i'm learning how to be speak up for myself mm-hmm. so one time you're like i want mexican food but then your friend because you've always been that person to be like all right a people pleaser yeah be like all right no I w- no why don't we do this so when it comes to that stage because it's always been like all right we always going to have chinese food it's for hard for us to resolve that conflict of like all right why don't we do mexican food this time and if we don't do mexican food then it's like all right then we have to part ways now because we're both very different no, uh, does that make sense yeah kind of, i think it's we're talking about um setting boundaries could that be like learning how to, to set boundaries within friendships, within friendships for the yeah. longevity of the friendship yes of course yeah. be open to your friend mm-hmm. um and tell them this is actually what i i would like to have mm-hmm. and your friend should be a, a very understanding person in the sense that if it's your friend or she's your friend in the first place should be somebody who is understanding you more accommodating and more like but they necessarily maybe could not be like that because they're also growing right they don't know they're learning so how do you, to do you, be do like you mean that. like if you a conflict is the sense that when you say no to them you are going to let them down or make them feel feel bad and you're going to lose their relationship and uh, yes. friendship how and you want you to maintain it to, how do you then from common ground yeah. from there to for your friend to have to facilitate that conversation to be like all right both of us are growing we're all growing yeah. we have different interests we're all drawing boundaries within this friendship before we didn't have boundaries yes things like that and that is and that's what i'm saying um, yeah. what i'm saying is this mm. uh, you need to set boundaries you need to sit with your friend and be open mm-hmm. in a more understanding way more open and more objective way and explain yeah. that we don't have always to do the same things together i may be having something that is that i like and you may be having something that you like so feel free in an mm. op- in an open and accommodative way resolve that conflict True. in that way understanding and listening to one another and That's accommodating each other's differences extending the olive then the, it, it was called extending the olive branch yeah, then if it is hard if there's no afraid, yeah. if there's no if somebody cannot understand you or does not want uh, to step into the plate and probably understand your situation and accommodate you for who you are then you, you don't deserve that friendship True. Yeah, you don't deserve. If some surely if somebody doesn't take me for who I am, they, they I don't I don't think I'm um, they are worth my friendship. Yeah. You know? And Because so, I will be there not mm-hmm. for me, but for that person. person. It is not true. fair. It's true. Yeah. As for people people pleasers, yeah, also breed problems. Yeah. Because you never talk about yourself and yeah. your boundaries. Yeah. And when you do it comes from for the other person it can be a surprise because they've always been a yes person yes, yeah. yes 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 yeah. yes yeah. okay tell me remember okay put yourself back when you were in your late 20s you know how many friends see? did you have in my late 20s yeah hey how many friends did you have are they still friends with you and i'm asking you that because i want you to like say okay not say but to prove that it's actually you fall out of friendships and it's okay because you fall out of friendships and you find new french you form new friendships as you get older so tell us from your late 20s to now are you still friends with people that you are friends with uh yeah and some of them i'm still friend, friends with and some i'm not so as you know just like in life thing is in life as we grow even now from here we start drifting why because values change mm-hmm. our desires change and where we get things changed so we drift like even in your family when you were younger you were together true in one family but now your brother is far your sister is far and we drift you get your partner you move on it is the same with friendship 
the same thing. So you, you used to be close to another person mm -hmm. and then tomorrow you are no longer close because of distance. For mm -hmm. example, for me, when I moved from Kenya, I had very nice friends. When I moved from Kenya to Australia, I've lost that connection. And I went, it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's normal. It's you understandable. Haven't, you've no, no, you no, haven't no, been no, 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 no. Unless when issues are, uh, they are kind of uh, misunderstanding, and we had we decided to disagree part and ways. Uh, part ways. It's and, okay yeah. as well. Yeah, it's normal. It's normal. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. I think when you're young, mm -hmm. okay, for me, for someone who's baby, uh, baby, Ooh, wait, who's very, <laughs> who's very people focused. Yeah. When I lose any type of connection, yeah. it has a big impact in my life and oh. probably for a lot of people who are young because maybe that's your first conflict, you've never had a conflict before, you're yeah. growing up. So it's very hard to be like, you feel like this is the end of the world, you're never going to have friends again, like maybe well. the, you are the problem or something. Yeah. Sorry that you feel that way, but it is very, it's very normal. normal to it feel is, that yes, way. it's normal to feel yeah. that way and it's normal uh to part ways with a friend yeah and it and, and also you don't know tomorrow you will get another friend which is who is better than that other friend it's true. and you can also reconcile issues and come back again as friends at some point where everybody is mature I more know. considerate and more connecting I them out that. yeah yeah always yeah. leave room for don't burn bridges yeah um, leave room but it depends it. when you say it's true. Yeah, it depends if, on the if situation. If it happens if it, if in the okay. future, then yeah. it's okay. Okay. If like if you reconnect, but if you also don't reconnect, it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. It's it's about human life. As we, I, I always say, we are individuals, mm -hmm. and we tend to have the way uh, our own ways when we are doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are individuals, unique. The only thing that connects us together is understanding for each other understanding of each other and accommodating each other each other yeah True. great great okay mom it's as i said as we said as i said as we said in the beginning of the video it's been seven years probably we've changed a lot physically can you tell <laughs> because i've been trying to lose weight but the weight is losing me at this <laughs> moment um and <clears throat> so maybe let's do a quick fire um get to know us okay bring it on bring it on <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, yes. All right. So I'm going to um, mention. I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to say, or I'm going to mention some. I'm going to mention something. Yeah. It could be food, whatever. Mm -hmm. a, an aspect of life, and yeah. then you tell me about yeah. you. Yeah. Favorite snack. Favorite snack. Hey. You know somebody born like me who never grew up with snacks. I don't know you. You tell me. <laughs> I grew up without snacks. We didn't have snacks. But anyway, we had snacks. I think I like my favorite snack is. No, um, maybe choma. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> is that, a, that is a meal. That's a snack. That's a meal. Okay. Maybe choma, bana. Hey. That was your you meal. Maybe choma is a corn, roast corn, roast maize. white corn, yeah. or maize. Yeah. And then when you eat and then you drink water, that's a meal. Mm -hmm. For me in Australia, my. Um, what did you say again? What did you ask? What is my favorite snack? snack is white chocolate. Oh, yeah. I love Ferrero white chocolate. Rocher. Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> the ball ones. The ones like a ball. It reminds me of some wild fruits at home. Oh, yeah. Amarula. Yes, Amarula tree. The tree. Yeah, yeah. the fruits from that macadamia. tree. Macadamia. No, they're no. not macadamia. Okay. No, we didn't have macadamia. No, no, no. Mm. It's just some wild, the, the Amarula tree, if you know. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. So that's my snack. What about yours? My oh snack. I like savory. I don't think I like sweet. Mm. So my favorite is a popcorn. I love popcorn. See, popcorn is like maize because it comes from corn. Maybe it stems from my childhood. Probably. Well. What was? I love popcorn. I could eat popcorn anytime, and it's also so. Could that be the the thing about the uh, choma, the corn maybe. roast corn? Because it's roast corn <laughs> in a different form. <laughs> yes. Um, but I love popcorn because it's so versatile. You can have it with coffee. Yeah. You can have it while you're watching a movie. Yeah. You can have Chewing. it. There's sweet popcorn. Yeah. There's savory popcorn. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Worst habit. <laughs> and you've tried. <laughs> Worst habit. Or just a habit that you probably... I'm just thinking, sorry, I'm looking there. I'm just trying thinking. Just thinking. to go first? Yeah, you go first, yes. Thank you. Overthinking. I overthink everything that it's almost delibi... Delibitating. Yeah. Delibi? 
Debilitating. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Debili. Hey, the debili, whatever debili. So I overthink every single thing. Like I'm such a perfectionist. So I always try to be um you always try to be like perfect. Like I want to present as I don't know, Megan Marco, you know, very poised, very silly what. But uh uh-uh. uh I'm just a yapa. Naturally, I'm a... No, yapas. You know what yapa means? Yeah. People who talk a lot. So I overthink everything and I... It's for my... It's getting to a point in life where it's actually getting serious. Wow. Because it's giving me major anxiety. Do you think you can see a therapist or something? <laughs> You're my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, that's my bad habit. What yeah, about okay. you? Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is bad or... I don't know. Uh, you know... um. My bad habit is what shall I do? What shall I say? No, I have a lot of them. I I am scared of ghosts. Is that a bad habit? Do you do it every day? Like of course I'm scared. No. Because habit is (laughs) okay. I I tell you I tell you this one. Mm -hmm. I turn up at my children's houses uninvited. And I'm when I'm told Hmm. When they tell me off, I feel offended. And I've, I've tried to stop. No. Why? Because as a mother, don't, you should not be invited to go and see your children. Right? Mom. See? No, it's but right. you, the problem with you is that you set the intention to come. So you will tell me, for example, you'll be like, oh, I'm coming to your house tomorrow. I'm like, okay, what time? You're like, ah, I don't know, 10 o'clock. But why are you showing up at 8.30? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why should I be invited to my children's home? So I'm like, no, because I could be sleeping. That's a conflict that I have. Yeah. So you just, I'm also an adult, right? Like I The have children, you see, we were talking brain. about the generational gap. <laughs> Those are the things that we mothers, we children who have flown out of the nest, we suffer from that because we miss them. They don't know that we miss them. True. Okay. Yeah. Dream... What's your dream travel destination? My dream travel destination, as I said, or I think, as I said to myself, I would like to travel to a small country in West Africa or part of Africa. That's my dream destination. Although I have other destinations, but that one's... I want a place where I just go there, mingle with the people, disappear into the people, and blend in. Mm, That's what I like. Um, ask me. What about yours then? Thank you. <laughs> so, Why could you just say? For me, <laughs> so for me, actually, mm-hmm. because I don't have, I struggle with things that are favorite because I'm just, I'm a free spirit. So I would probably say now Vanuatu. Vanuatu? So, and I... Vanuatu, why yes. <laughs> Vanuatu. Vanuatu, which country is that? <laughs> Vanuatu is it in is, Asia or in, no? I uh, think it's Poly, Polynesian. Ama. It what is, is Polynesian? Polynesian like, um, what's the Polynesian country <coughs> where there's people who look like the Africans but they're not Africans? Oh, that, that's like Solomon Islands. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm. So I like to immerse myself in a in a destination that is above culture and people. So exotic. Van- Yes. Where this exotic culture, like the Masai in Kenya landscape. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there's land. something to offer. So when I went, when, when I went, oh my God, when I saw the Vanuatu advert, it was done so well because it's like, there's bits of culture, there's, and it's also a very small, and I, 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 I like going to these nations that are not over Yeah, We are almost, we are, we are almost, we are almost sharing so the Van, same. See, you don't even know about Vanuatu, mm. but I'll show you a video after I this. know, I think it's I've read amazing. about it in my, yeah, yeah. in my social, there was a project that Australia was doing there. It's an island, there. I yes. think it's an island, but yeah. correct if I'm wrong, it's an island. It is. There's so much culture, there's so much to offer from the, from the landscape perspective, and also food as well. So, awesome. I'll see Vanuatu. Awesome. Oh, that's good. You should, you that should. is one. <laughs> Uh-huh. That should be one of your bucket list, yeah? It is. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess we are flowing along well. We're getting to the last bit of it. Bit of it. Mm-hmm. All right. In the spirit of quick fire, let's do quick fire wisdom. All right. 
What is quick fire? I say a topic mm-hmm. and you give advice in one line only. Okay. Love. Go for it. Okay. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more? If you love someone, tell them that you love them. Okay. And see their reaction. All right. Two. Career. Just two top things. We'll do two. Career. Do what you love. Oh. What? Are you doing what you love? I do. Okay. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very full. Career-wise. If it's something yeah. that in what what do you value? Look at the value. Mm-hmm. What value does it bring? <laughs> you are talking to me. <laughs> what value do, does it bring? <laughs> what does it, what value does it bring to your life? And yes, what value does it bring to your life? And okay. what do you gain from it? Okay. Great. I think that's it. For me, love. Love. Love is commitment mm-hmm. for me. Career. Choosing someone every day. Mm-hmm. Career is about constantly trying to f- find something you love. You don't have to find it now, but you can find it in all the little things that you do in terms of your career choices. All right, our battery is actually flashing, so that means that. Hope we will do more of this. to wrap up yeah. because of technical reasons, but we've really enjoyed ourselves. I think yeah, so. Yeah, I, I I hope you have too been also. Safe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so mom, as we wrap up, um, what's one thing that you want to say as a parting shot? As a parting shot, I hope you enjoy these videos the way we enjoy to make it. True. For me, a parting shot, I really want to encourage you to come back for more. And I hope you picked something, even if it's one word, one sentence, one story, that you felt really inspired, encouraged, and motivated you. All right, with that. Last um... shot. I hope you enjoy this video the way... I hope you enjoy. Cut. All uh, right. <laughs> okay, one last one. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this. The pet is dying. Okay, Quickly. Ah. I hope you. Chef <laughs> Jemasa. I stop. Go <laughs> keep going. I hope you enjoyed this video the way we enjoyed making it. Yes. And if you enjoyed it, give like. us a thumbs up. Like it. Subscribe, subscribe and, and comment. comment. Ha 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 ha!